What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 overview. So in this video, I thought I'd do another kind of discussion topic like I did with the whole firmware spoofing. This time talking about PS4 exploit hosts, going over a lot of the different options that these exploit hosts have, what they're used for, as well as some general tips and tricks. That's what we're gonna be covering here in this video, especially for people who are perhaps new to jailbreaking the PS4 and maybe can be a little bit intimidated by all of these different exploit host options and not knowing, you know, which one works best. Should you use auto host? Should you use manual host? What's the difference between the compressed host and the non-compressed host? Should you be restoring host to user guide? What does that even mean? We're going to be covering that all here in this video. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the exploit itself is done through the internet browser because it's an exploit in the PS4's WebKit, which is then chained with a kernel exploit, which then gives you kernel read-write access, uh, which basically gives you your jailbreak. So essentially, it's a two-stage exploit. They need to exploit the web browser first and then the kernel. So what we need to do is head on to the internet browser and go to an exploit host. So there's a few different ones available. KMEPS4.site is the one that I'm currently using most of the time. It's Chameleon's host and it generally is kind of kept up to date, especially when it comes to the latest versions of Gold Hen. It's pretty much the official exploit host of Gold Hen. So all the latest Gold Hen releases come to this exploit host first usually. But there's other good options as well. You also have uh, Caro218. Uh, .ir is another good one. I like the hosts that have a very short URL because it's easy to remember and it doesn't take very long to type in if you have to retype it. So caro218.ir is another one. And another good option as well is there's Echo Stretches 7 in 1 host, which is es7in1.site. If you head here, this gives you links to multiple different exploit hosts, including Echo Stretch's own host, as well as Chameleon's host, as we just talked about. But we can also go to other hosts, and we also have Lethal's and Caro's here as well. So this is a good option to have this bookmarked in your browser, so that if any exploit host goes down, you have other options that you can select. But for this video, we're just going to primarily be using Chameleon's host, uh, since that's the one I generally use most of the time and I show most of the time in my videos these days. So first of all, we got two options here, restore offline cache. We'll get back to that one. The first one we have here is PS4 9.00 Chameleon AIO host. Some hosts are just for 9.00, which is the latest jailbreakable firmware. There are other hosts that will have exploits for 9.00, 6.72, 5.05, those are other older firmwares that are also jailbreakable. But 9.00 is what most people tend to be on these days because it's the highest jailbreakable firmware currently. So most hosts will support 9.00. So if you're on a host like caro218.ir that has a ton of options for all these different firmwares, if you're on 9.00, you would just focus on the ones labeled for 9.00. So in this case, Chameleon's host is just for 9.00. So we just have the 9.00 AIO host right here. Now you can see it says installing offline cache when you first go on here. And then we have a manual host option and an auto host option. Now we'll take a look at the manual host option first. So if we go into manual host exploit, and then we get two more options here for the light host manual method and full host manual method, you'll have these same options with the auto host as well. And the difference between these two may seem like the light host just has less payloads and the full host has more payloads. But actually the difference is to do with which ones are using compressed or non-compressed payloads. So the light host does not use compressed payloads. So all of the payloads for things like Gold Hen, the FTP, all of that stuff, those payloads are not compressed. So they're just stored in the normal .bin format and executed on launch. Whereas with the full host, you will have some payloads that are compressed. So basically they're compressed into a bz2 file which is essentially like a zip archive that makes the file size of the payload smaller so that they can basically cache more payloads on the page and it will cache faster if they're all compressed so that's generally why you have compressed payloads you can get more payloads on there especially for the esp chips that don't have much memory you can get more payloads on but the only kind of downside with the compressed versions is that there's more processing power used on the host to actually decompress the payloads on launch Plus, it may also take a bit longer and it's an extra step involved when, when executing a payload, which could potentially cause a problem. So generally, the non-compressed versions may be a bit faster to load the payloads and a bit more stable. So it's up to you which one you want to use. So those are the main differences between like the compressed versions and the light versions of a host. However, Chameleon's version specifically, even the full host here, 
says it's a hybrid, which means most of the payloads in this case, even in the full host, are actually not compressed. The only payloads that are compressed in the Chameleon's host with the full host are the mod menu payloads for GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2, which are, of course, the payloads that are not included in the light host version. So generally with Chameleon's host, it doesn't really matter much if you use the full host or the light host, but with other exploit hosts, they might have all the payloads compressed for the compressed version and none of the payloads compressed for the light version. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and just select the full host manual method. And then what you see here is it says installing offline cache and that counts up and that can take a while, especially if you're on a Wi-Fi connection. And what this is doing is caching the payloads in the browser for offline use, which means you can always return to this website after it's been cached, even if you're not connected to the internet. Now, it's often recommended to close the browser and reopen it after caching has been completed. That way, it's primarily loading the offline cached version. That way, there's going to be less latency when actually loading the payloads because it's all stored locally on your PS4 and you're potentially going to have less errors. So that's essentially why they cache it but it's also so that you can use it completely offline if you want to. We can go over to the settings here. We can completely disconnect from the network. But if I go back to that same exact page, it will take us here and we can still load the payloads even though we're no longer connected to the internet. So you can always cache payloads offline. And then if you need to take your PS4 somewhere where you're not going to be online with it, as long as you bookmark this exact link that's been cached, you can return to this page even when you're offline. Now, one thing to mention here is if you lose the link after it's been cached, you will not be able to go back to the main website to then, you know, access that page again because the main website has not been cached. It's usually only the page with the payloads on it that gets cached. So it's a very important that if you are going to be relying on that offline cache when you're not connected to the internet, it's very important that you actually, you know, maintain that original link to the actual payloads themselves, uh, which is this one here. So bookmark it or something in your browser, add it to your bookmarks or make sure you keep it in your frequently used pages so that you can reaccess it again because you can see that one I can't access. But the one that was actually cached here is still accessible. So I'm going to go ahead and just re-enable the internet connection again. And we can head back on here. Another thing to mention about the offline cache is after a while, sometimes it can stop working. So you're trying to load a payload and it just doesn't work or it just gives you out of memory errors every single time no matter what and you're not able to load it that can happen sometimes after a while of a you know exploit page being cached not only that but you can also run into issues where if the website gets updated with new payloads and you're not seeing the new payloads because you know the site's still using the cached version from when you originally cached it and not updating to the live version of the website that has new payloads available then what you're going to want to do in those situations is clear the cache so that you can then recache the live version of the site and get all the latest payloads and updates. You can do that by hitting the options button, going over to settings and clearing your website data. Clearing your website data also clears the offline cache. So if we close the browser and reopen it and go back to that same page again, you'll see that once again, it will recache the website for offline use and that will recache the new, the new live version of the site with any new updated payloads that may have been updated. So anyway, that's basically the offline caching. Okay, so what is the difference between the manual host and the auto host? Well, with the manual host here, what happens is when you select it, it will ask you what payload to run first before loading the exploit. So you say gold hen, and then it will run the exploit once you select the payload. And once it's successfully exploited, it will then load the payload automatically afterwards. And that's essentially how the manual host works. It's useful if you just want to check what payloads are available in a host without actually running the exploit. It can be pretty handy and it's generally considered to be more stable because it does everything kind of at once instead of waiting for you to initiate the next step, uh, which could cause errors in between. So generally, it's considered to be a little bit more stable. The auto host, on the other hand, if we switch over to the auto host here, so we'll switch on over here, kmeps4.site, we'll select the auto host this time, which we'll also have to cache in the browser. So we'll go to auto host exploit and we'll do the full host here, auto method. So the difference with this one is as soon as you select the auto host option, it will immediately start trying to jailbreak the PS4. So as you can see here, it's loading menu. And then it will tell me to plug in the USB drive if it's my first time trying to jailbreak the PS4. And then once we've successfully, you know, done the jailbreak, it will then give us the option to run the payload. 
And then if I try and run the payload here, it will go ahead and say, well, obviously I'm already running it, but you, it would then run the payload immediately. So this is the difference between the auto host and the manual host. Really not a huge difference. The auto host will try and run the jailbreak before asking you what payload you want to run. And only once the jailbreak is running, it will then give you the list of payloads to select and it will just load that payload immediately when you select it because it's already run the exploit. Whereas the manual host will give you the payloads first and say, hey, what payload do you want to run first? And when you select it, it will then load the jailbreak and then the payload afterwards. So those are kind of the main differences right there. And one other interesting thing to note is once you've ran one payload, you can then chain load multiple payloads one after the other. So I've loaded the gold hen payload, but then because the exploit is already loaded, it's ready to load any additional payloads I want to run. So I can do the, say, enable updates payload and it runs it immediately. And then once that payload's done, I'll run the disable updates payload. And you can see that one works immediately as well. And then I could run, I don't know, the FTP server. Select that option, FTP server runs. So you can just chain load payload after payload after payload. However, if you refresh the browser here, or you close the browser and reopen it, or for instance, you run into a not enough free system memory error when loading one of these payloads, then that will basically interrupt the WebKit exploit and you'll have to reload the page again. And when you next try and run another payload again, if we refresh the browser here, and we got our not enough free system memory, it's going to have to run the exploit again because you've refreshed the browser because the WebKit exploit has to run every time you refresh the browser which means you have to wait. So this is the problem. It takes a little while and then you can run the payloads again. So once again, we'll do the disable updates payload and now it runs immediately. So that is something to consider with the WebKit exploit and the kernel exploit. Once the kernel exploit has ran once, that's permanent. As long as you haven't rebooted your PS4, then the kernel exploit is still running essentially. So you will not have to re-enter the USB drive to run the kernel exploit again. However, if you refresh the browser and try and run another payload, it will have to run through the WebKit exploit again every single time you refresh the browser. So it will still take a little while before it will then let you load a payload after a refresh. So those are kind of the main things. There are a few other things to mention real quick. There is also the, in the auto host options, you can see there's auto host options for loading a specific payload. Now these can be quicker for loading gold hen if you're just trying to run the gold hen payload and you're not interested in loading any of the other payloads, then using one of these auto hosts for Gold Hen is actually kind of recommended because it can be a little bit faster. Leafles and Stugid's method are pretty similar. And basically the way they work is they'll do the auto host and then they'll automatically run Gold Hen as well. So it's kind of all in one. You just hit that one button and then it will start running the exploit. It'll ask you to put in the USB drive and then instead of using alert boxes where you have to wait and click OK, it's a little bit faster. It kind of listens for a key press. So all you need to do is plug in the USB drive when it tells you to. When the notification pops up, you can unplug the USB drive, press X on your controller, and then it will go ahead and run the payload straight afterwards. So it's a little bit quicker for running something like Gold Hen if that's the only payload that you're interested in. And those are typically also used in the ESP hosts which are the little Wi-Fi Arduino style chips that can be used to jailbreak the PS4 offline. Some of those chips can even inject the USB image automatically for you so it can all be done in one, which is pretty handy. I've got videos on that. I'll leave in the cards and in the description if you want to check that out. Okay, and pretty much last but not least, we also have the Restore Offline Cache Host, which currently doesn't seem to be working in Chameleon's host. So we'll go back onto caro218.ir and we'll do this one instead. So we've got a restore host option right here. I think you need to make sure that you have cleared your website data before doing this. Uh, so we'll restore, we'll restore host, we'll do 900cm. Yep, there we go. So you can see caro manual host and now it is caching. So yeah, you do need to, if you already have the exploit host cached in your browser, you need to clear your website data first and then run the restore host otherwise it will not work it will just take you to the normal page and there we go it says reopen the page so basically we now have it cached in our user guide page so instead of going to the browser in order to load our exploit we can instead go to settings user guide and we can load up the user guide page 
and it will take us to the exploit right here and we can load it from here. So using the user guide to load the payloads is generally considered to be better because it's more lightweight. It doesn't use up as much memory as the normal web browser. So you're not going to get as many out of memory errors. Plus also it doesn't log things like the browsing history or frequently used pages when you're using the user guide method. So you're not going to have to clear that as often. There are certain situations where this won't work. Like if you're using a custom DNS, for example, Al Azib's DNS, which blocks Sony servers as a popular DNS a lot of people use it redirects to Al Azib's own exploit host. So if you try and restore like Carol's host to user guide and you're using Al Azib's DNS, it will not take you to Carol's host in the user guide. It will redirect to Al Azib's host instead uh, because you have those DNS settings on there. So you must not be using a custom DNS if you're going to be using the restore to user guide option. And then finally, we have the offline trainer option, which basically gives you a bunch of cheats that you can apply for your games using the web RTE payload. And this can be cached offline in your browser for offline use as well. Basically an offline version of the PS4 web trainer by Tyler Mods. That's essentially what it is. It's generally not used as often now because we have things like the gold hen cheats, which can be used online and offline and use the same type of cheats. So generally this is not considered as useful as it used to be. Also, a lot of these hosts are on GitHub. The source for them is on GitHub, not all of them, but some of the hosts, they do have their source on GitHub like Caro's host. So if you want to host it manually on your own server or on your computer so that you're not relying on an internet connection and if the host ever goes down in future, you can have your own local copy that you're running from your own server, then that's an option as well. Um, I'll probably leave Carol's one down in the video description. So anyway, that's basically it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. I know it was a bit long, very heavy on the explanations, but let me know if you like this type of video or not and I might do more in the future. So anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.